Hi guys, I'm going to do a guide for um, God Wars bosses. Um, this one's uh, especially for um, Sarah, but it also will work for Bandos and Zami. You just have to change what spell you use, because they're all weak to magic. Um, for Ceridonium, you use the Ice Barrage and Ice Blitz. Um, you use the Ice Blitz when you're taking down the minions and the Barrage when you go in and take down the boss. That's so you don't get more than one person on you, or one monster on you, when you're doing your kill count. Um, the setup, basically, you can have whatever mage armor is the best that you can afford. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as you don't have really weak um, stuff. So right here I have Arams on, which isn't that expensive. Um, Ganodermic boots are only about 40k in the GE right now. I have Spellcaster gloves on, but you can just use um, the Cholera Lancer 10 gloves if you want. Um, a master wand because I can't obviously afford an Abrams wand and um, I can but it's completely retarded and the amount of difference hits that you get is pointless. Um, the Farseer kite shield um, is a really good kite shield because it, you, it doesn't waste any more prayer and in EOC the prayer goes down really quick. Um, other than that you can buy basically there's the batwing um, shield that's very helpful when you're trying to heal. Um, and then a holy symbol and a Zamorak arrow you need when you're killing the um, followers to get kill count at the beginning. After that, I have a Arcane Stream Necklace, which I switched to. You can also use a Fury if you'd like. Um, and then for Aurora, you really want to, if you have it, definitely take it as the Penance Aurora because for about 40 minutes, all you really need is a Penance Aurora and um, soul split and you can basically just keep killing him without getting hit at all um, because of the way it works um, and then here I have the tomb of frost I use that for kill count just to save a few water runes um, and then and then the rest of this stuff is um, for setup um, I take three yak pouches and I will summon the first one before I leave um, I have Trollheim teleports to get there because that's the easiest way, um, which is just a house teleport um, chipped to a Trollheim. You have to do the love story quest for that. And then about 2,000 blood runes and 10,000 water runes will get you enough to cast along with the yak patches for about a two hour trip. Um, and then I take four extreme magic flask and four prayer renewal flasks. Overloads are kind of a waste. Um, especially in AOC because you don't really need defense. I mean, you can take a few defense, extreme defense potions if you really want. Like if you don't have the best armor, you could take that um, and along with it. Um, I also take Dreadnips. They're, they help a little bit when you're soloing. Um, in groups, you probably don't really need them. Um, and then before I go, I'll show you what I do. Um, I go to um, Ulu to bathe in the spas because you get um, increased prayer points and um, hit points and run. Uh, the easiest way to get there is home teleport to Port Sarum and then take a charter a boat over, which I'm doing now. And just Also, I don't think I mentioned that, the Ceridonium Cape, which is the god capes that you get at the cave, um, at the Duel Arena, or the um, Mages Arena in the Wilderness. It has the best um, crit damage, critical hit damage, um, and you definitely want that. Um, if not, I don't even know what else to use. That's a fairly easy one to get, so I'm not going to try to find a preference for that. Okay, so when you're here, the first thing you want to do is the other thing I take, you see I have magic logs in my inventory, it's because um, if you burn those in a bonfire, five of them, you will get a 5% boost to your HP. Um, you can burn U ones or maple ones depending on your fire making level, you'll just get a different, um, you'll just get a different HP boost. And then what I will do is I will fill these, these empty spots up and summon a yak and put as many prayer flasks as I can in there. Um, that'll just lengthen the trip. So what you do is you run over here and you bathe in this spa, which is the Bandos pool. So then Bandos followers will not attack you. 
you bathe in this pool, which is the sulfur one, and I believe that's the life, I don't know, life points or prayer one, or running one, I don't know. I just bathe in all of them. It solves the problem of trying to figure out which one's which. That's the seawater one. That's the run one. And then I believe this thermal bath over here is the um, prayer one. I bathe in all of them, and then what I do is I'll light a fire, and I'll add the logs to it. And you want to try to do the, this process as quick as possible because basically any time, as much, those pools only last for a certain amount of time. And this um, fire boost that you'll see here in the chat box in a few seconds only lasts for a certain amount of time. See, it'll last for 60 minutes. So you'll get a 5% boost to your overall health, which is helpful. Every little bit helps. So then I'll come over here, I'll summon my yak pouch because I use this for banking. That's really honestly the only reason why I take it. Oh, and look, I forgot something. <laughs> Don't do this. You definitely want to take a super restore flask because you will definitely forget that. And then you will not be able to resummon your pouch and lose whatever you have inside of it. So I just went on a trip. That's why I don't have any. So summon your yak. Now, if you want to stay for a ridiculously long amount of time, you can take a crap ton of flasks, of prayer flasks, and that's really what will lengthen your trip. So I just take about, I, I don't even take any in my yak. I just take like 10 food in my yak and then I'll just put as many prayer flasks as I can in my inventory. So I'll right now I'll just for this put some in there and then I take a, a couple food. The only reason why I take food is because uh, in case you accidentally miss flicking on your soul split or something then you can do that. So in order to get there you know I'm pretty sure everyone knows this but you go to Trollheim and you just climb down the eastern side of the mountain Um, you probably have to have some agility level for these. If not, you can just walk around and take a longer way. It's not that big of a deal. So, starting off, you want to make sure you are on autocast ice blitz um, for the followers. you squeeze past this boulder. Now, right now this, the pool will allow me to run through this area and not really be hit that much by anything, um, which is what they're nice for because it gives you unlimited run power. As you'll see here, my oh, I didn't actually bathe in the pool, so that's not going to be very effective. But So see, I have zero run power right now, and if I would have bathed in that pool, I would have full run still, and I wouldn't have to be walking and getting hit by for a random amount of HP. Once you come down here for Sarah followers, which I'm going to show you is to the east. Um, now you can sit out here and you can basically attack anything that's melee because they're all weak to um, magic. So you can attack the spiritual warriors. Um, the Knights of Ceridonium are the two ones that I always attack. Now you can attack them out here. There's about three of them. That's two spiritual warriors and a knight that spawns over here. And they're always in combat. So um, the minute you do attack them, unfortunately, they do start attacking you, well, attempt to attack you, but usually they get frozen like this, so they're really not going to be able to hit you. Um, so then you just get your kill count this way up here. If you want, you can climb down these rocks. Down here, there's a quick, there's some more spawns, and there's up there. They're not usually all fighting, though, so there's a knight there, there's another knight. There's about three warriors that are, are four. There's one warrior here, one there, one there, one there. So you can just constantly attack them until you can kill count. And then you want to make sure you put your stream on um, and your Farseer Kite Shield when you go into boss. Because the Farseer Kite Shield, you want to set up your ability bar somewhat like this. I mean, you can tweak it to how you feel comfortable. This is how I feel comfortable. I have Rack, Impact, Combust, Chain, and Dragon Death. And those are all basic abilities. Um, and then then I have a Spiffigate, Wild Magic, Tsunami, Metamorphosis as um, my thresholds and my ultimates. I really don't use Tsunami. Tsun it's just on there because sometimes um, you won't kill it and then you'll use that instead. I also have a Reflect um, in Reconnaissance and then Rejuvenate. Um, reflect is the one that is really helpful basically it's a threshold and it will reflect damage back to all three of all of the minions and the boss when you're inside so I use that one right at the beginning 
um, as soon as I can. And then Reconnaissance, the next attack that you get hit, it'll heal you. If you time it right on Sarah, you'll get healed for like a thousand because he jumps up in the air, she jumps up in the air, whatever the heck it is, and hits the ground and it'll, it'll do a decent amount of damage to you. But if you do that right before it, it heals you back up. And then if you're at really low health, what I do is I just start spamming every one of these basic abilities and I'll do rack and then uh, oh, another one and then go back to rack and then do another one because rack will always refresh after you click another one. So, um, and then once you get that, I do rejuvenate and that'll heal you for 40% of your health. It'll completely drain your bar, but it's really useful if you're down a little bit lower. If you do go in there and you are using have penance on and have soul split on, the quick curses you want to have on, if you're soloing and don't feel comfortable yet, you can protect item. Um, soul split obviously and then this the other one is the um, is the magic version of turmoil which is called torment that will basically just you won't need to do anything for about 40 minutes of just being in there um, and you can use your dread nips as you do and usually I can get about two of the minions to die before I even kill the boss all the way so good luck and uh, it's really easy to solo all the bosses. I hope you get decent drops. I'll post a video soon of showing actual killings. That way um, you guys get a better idea. But that's it's fairly easy to do. Um, once you go in there, you can kind of learn a setup and what to do yourself. Bye.